Hello, I'm Robin Manker with Phoenix Ball Balancing. Today I'd like to show you some tips on how to use your smartphone and how to set up your smartphone on the lanes to get great videos to use in our PAP locator program, which is also part of the Phoenix Ball Balancing system. Here's how to set up an iPhone for slow motion videos. Press settings, then photos and camera, scroll down, and click record slow mo. You want the box with 240 frames per second checked, then reverse back into your main screen. Here's how to set up an Android phone for slow motion photography. Select the camera. When you get there, touch mode. This is currently in auto mode. I want to go to sports. Do that and then select it. Then we want to go to slow motion. So I'm going to press the settings and then the camera icon. Right now it's under normal. I want to go to slow motion. But there are several options under slow motion. So then we need to select the other camera icon over here. The default value is one half, I believe, and we want one eighth. If we select one eighth, then there will actually be 240 frames shot per second as opposed to the normal 30 and we'll get very good high quality non-blurry videos. An 8x magnifying lens can be purchased through eBay for about $15-$20. It comes in three parts, the phone holder, the lens, and the tripod. Let me show you how to assemble. Very easy. I'm going to work from the back of the phone where the lens is. I need to center this hole over the lens. This is spring-loaded. I simply pull it Clip it on. This piece slides back and forth, so I want to slide it to where it's right over the lens. Tighten it down. Screw the lens on. Screw the tripod on. And we're ready to go. Here's an example of a magnifying lens. This is calibrated from three to infinity, and this needs to be set whenever you're getting ready to take videos. Our preferred location for your smartphone camera is close to the approach and near the back edge of the approach. The camera's position left to right can be varied according to the bowler. For many bowlers, placing the camera about the second arrow from the gutter is about right. I'm going to start by calibrating my magnifier. I'm standing at the back of the approach and I've placed four bowling balls at different locations that you might want to uh, videotape. I'm going to put the camera on a tripod now and zoom in on the balls to get them in focus to see how the magnifier should be set. Here is the ball closest to the foul line in focus. It is magnified 1.5 times on the camera and 8 times on the lens, which gives a total magnification of 12x. The second ball is at the arrows, and here you see it magnified 12x times, like the first ball. At this distance from the camera, we're going to need to increase the magnification. Here we've zoomed in to 2.7x on the camera, and with the 8x magnifier lens, we have a total magnification of about 22x. Now we'll move out to the third ball on the lane, which is quite a bit farther. And we're going to need more magnification. We're going to zoom as far as we can to 4 on the camera and 8 on the magnifier for a total of 32x magnification. That's the most we can get out of an 8x magnifier. If you're going to use these videos to determine a bowler's positive axis point, you will need to get pictures of the ball very close to the foul line, as close as possible after the release. The distance from the foul line 
will vary from bowler to bowler, but it's typically two to three feet. For such a bowler then, I would place the ball on the foul line, then move back two or three feet beyond the point where the camera will be located for the videotaping. From that point, focus the camera on the ball. Then, when you place the camera at its videotaping position, the ball will be in focus that distance past the foul line. At this point, you got some great tips for getting videos you can take to show your bowling style to your friends. If that's all you want to do, that's fine. But if you really want to find your PAP, then we have some more tips you're going to need. Here's how to capture pictures from your videos and send them to your computer. Select camera on your phone. Then look for the right video. When you find the video, Run it until it's time for a pause. We're about ready to capture here. There's where we want to capture. So we pause. Notice you got arrows, you can go back one frame at a time. Or you can go forward one frame at a time. I'm gonna to get to a spot that I like, click the icon in the middle and it captures the screen. Tap the screen again, go forward, forward until the ball has made about one quarter of a turn to get the best precision. Capture it. And the two pictures are now on the clipboard in your smartphone. I'm going to capture one more here because I like to get uh, pictures where the two marks are horizontal in one picture and then about vertical in the other picture. That way you know that you've done about a quarter of a turn. And we're going to send those pictures to an email account. So I'm going to go back to my picture camera setup and I have to find those two pictures that we just captured. I'll turn the phone around so we can see a little bit better. I have to go to the right albums, and these are in screenshots. So I go down to the screenshots, and there they are. I long press, and I get boxes that I can select. I select the pictures that I want. And then go up to send them by whatever method I want. I'm going to select Gmail and I'm ready to go. The pictures will already be attachments to your Gmail, so you don't have to do that again. Just tell your phone where you want to send the Gmail and they'll be sent to that account from which you can download and use them in the program to locate the PAP. We have done our best to minimize blur, but there will always be some blur in the pictures that you use. The ball must be in focus at the point at which the picture was captured. The camera cannot be moving. Ball movement down the lane causes blur, and revs cause blur. The more revs a ball has, the blurrier the picture will be. From our camera angle, and for a right-handed bowler, the revs will be in the direction of the arrow shown. Although both circles that we drew on the ball for reference are a little blurry, one is blurred more than the other. This blur occurred because the ball moved a small amount around this axis point while the picture was being taken. By looking at the rotation arrow, we can conclude that the left side of the blur of this point was created first when the lens was open, then the right side. When the software asks us to click on the spot where the blur is, it's important to click where the blur started. So in this case, we put the mark on the left side of the blur. The other circle on the ball that we drew appears to be pretty much a circle. So when asked to click on it, we can just click right in the middle. 
use the same method for marking the ball for the second picture as shown on the right here. When you click the Find the Pat button, you get a picture of the axis point on the ball and the actual horizontal and vertical distances to the PAP up in the upper right hand corner. If you follow these tips and work carefully, the axis point that the computer gives you will be within one fourth of an inch of the bowler's natural positive axis point. Thanks for watching this video. Look for a future video in which we show you how to use these same principles to map your axis migration. See you later.